So today's mission, we're gonna to try to get the 240 fixed up and ready to head her on down the road. First on the agenda, fix my little whoopsies. It's really a pretty nice old Traco. Just since we got the 170, which is much more convenient to haul around, I really don't need this thing. Get the seat aired up a little bit here. So I have a short list of things I wanna fix up on this machine. I think more than anything is to help its value for selling it. Number one, we got some body work to do on the front. I smashed a tree into this thing shortly after the thumb was put on it. I was carrying it in the dark and it's probably, I don't know, 36 inch diameter tree. And I started to lose it out of the thumb and I panicked and pulled the stick back hard and smashed it into the front of the machine, hurting the toolbox and the lower front window. So put a new front window in it last year. Now we need to straighten out the toolbox. Keep going or is that good? Am I right back where I was? It's hard to tell when you're pulling on it like how much is starting to bend. Yeah. I think it even bent. It, that thing was so big, it hit so well. Cause I was trying to catch it and I like panic mode, pulled the stick in and just launched it right into the front. Maybe I should flip that around and push, push that on the block. I thought I was helping us parking off the side, but I don't think I did. I wonder if we stood that block up. Yeah. Or can't, no we can't. We almost need one that's just right there. I just wonder, what if we even just hooked a chain? Well, they'd probably roll the top back a bunch. It's almost like if you... Well, the Porta Power idea isn't working too well, so we're gonna resort to a little body work here with this beautiful 3H chain we had laying around. I know, I know we didn't want to wreck a brand new one. We're gonna to try to weld that on the front of this toolbox in a couple places, and then we can hook the forklift and pull. And then maybe there and like right in that corner. Yeah. We'll see what happens.
Oh yeah. I don't know, maybe I'll try this one time before we move, <laughs> worry about hooking the other side. This chain may break for the toolbox bends. Look at this beautiful chain. How close? Well, just a <laughs> little bit more. Probably, I guess this top does have a pretty good bow to it. Yeah. I wonder, it is. It's like we almost need separately this dent to come out and also pull, like just weld straight onto that guy. That that came out way better than I expected yeah. to on that side. <laughs> Round two. Let's try that. Oh, look at that. It's latching just perfectly. Yeah, that's the goal, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe we just try to, I mean, there's a little dent there, but I also wonder how much does that little dent matter? We got her cleaned up, tracked inside here. From the exhaust pipe being bad last year, I fixed that and the turbo actuator being out, which is our next course of duty here. This side it got kind of sooted up. So I was able to steam that, use a little bit of soap and scrubber. Got this side of the machine cleaned up pretty well. Now we need to change that turbo actuator. So I'll give you one guess of who fixed us up with our new variable vane turbo actuator. That's right, Curtis at Area Diesel Services. So we're gonna get the old one pulled off. Make sure this is the right one. Maybe we should start with that. Slap this on and see if that fixes our new response from the current actuator on the turbo. So this is our old actuator. It's mounted right up here on the turbo itself. And what this does is move, oh well, wow. it's real. It's really gone downhill. It sounds like the gears are gonna explode. But I, I uh, wired it kind of halfway through its position to keep this thing from just rolling coal really bad. But the way it works, it you can look up plenty of videos on these, like a 6.0 power stroke where their first one's a variable vein. It basically makes this an adjustable size turbine housing by having the veins move, which kind of makes the air velocity higher, but creates more back pressure. It helps spool the turbo faster, react faster, things like that. Honestly, in the application of an excavator, I think it's kind of odd because these are always running full throttle. Obviously the load does change, so I'm sure it's doing something, but it's not like a automotive application where you're constantly on the throttle. Big John and I took this apart, I think it was last year, and tried to fix it and it definitely went downhill, but it was already broken, so what are you gonna do? So it is cooled with the engine's coolant. We got our two lines here and here run through it. So we'll have to disconnect that. Basically, this is such a high point in the engine. I think we can disconnect them and hold the lines up and really not lose much coolant while we swap this thing out. And then it just mounts on these four studs and you undo this clamp here on the little bracket. The new piece looks to be exactly the same. and even has the same plug connection to just plug right in in place of the other guy. I believe this is a tachometer pickup for the computer to see how fast the turbo is spinning to actuate the vein appropriately. And that'll loosen up. So that has a flat spot on the shaft, so you can't really screw that up. And then we zip these off. We need to take this one mount off for that actuator tack. And then just our two coolant lines, really nothing to it. Ow! <laughs> oh! Oh, just a little blood coming from that one. That hose clamp got me. 
Howie! Man, that felt good. Oh, we got lucky there. Didn't lose it. I know we just had you off there. Sometimes you can get the wrenches just right like that where you can squeeze them. Make your life easier. And this is just a good old trusty 10 millimeter. We'll get this beautiful mechanics wire fixed out of the way here. Turbo still seems to be good and free. I was concerned running it without this would cause it to want to lock up, which would be bad. Let's see what we have here with that new piece. I'm not sure if there's any sort of calibration you have to run or if you're just good to go here. I hope we can just run it. She swapped out, let's fire up, see if it works. So the next problem to overcome is the absolute destruction of the thumb cylinder. I did this last fall. Basically what we had going on here is this is a shuttle valve that protects the thumb from drifting down I guess was their idea. Well the problem is it blocks out your pressure relief on the machine from allowing it to move. So I bent the rod which in turn rammed the gland into the side of the cylinder and it all went downhill from there. This is wrecked. The inside of the tube is wrecked. So I got a new cylinder. But now, looking at it, it's not really the super great solution either because they flipped the lines on me. I told them, hey, I don't want that block anymore. I just want direct lines. Well, they ran the top down to the bottom and left the bottom one there, which causes us the problem of hooking up our hoses. So I think what I'm going to do is cut this line off of this tube and use it on the other cylinder after we cut its original lines off as well. So on this cylinder you can see our issue is they plumbed everything down towards the bottom and we needed to be plumbed up top out of harm's way. So I think I can just chop this guy off, get it out of our way. That line is bigger anyhow that was on that cylinder. We use it to come from this port, wrap around the side, and ultimately end up somewhere in this vector. 
that'll work. And then this one will just cut clear out of the way, take the port that's already there, stick it on here, and that'll allow us to connect to this hose. See if we can just push this thing out of there. And there she is all blown apart. Let's get to cutting on that tube. Well, it's not the prettiest thing in the whole wide world, but hopefully it works. I chopped this tube off of that cylinder, used it over here. This is the one that was down there on this cylinder, moved it up here. Got that guy welded on there. Hopefully this all works. I cleaned it out with a pig mat and then shoved the rod and gland assembly back in her. Let's go get her installed on the machine. That scared poor Yoki a bit. So I'm gonna pull this pin. I have on the forklift the pin for this end and I'm hoping I'll just slide this out on the forks and just sort of set it in here. We'll pin the, the top one first. I can back out and then support this end. May need to hook up the hydraulic hoses. That way we can just use the auxiliary to line it up. We'll see what happens. Yes, I do hope this all fits and we didn't get screwed on the size of the pin or the width of anything. Fingers crossed, because I didn't measure any of it. and sliding. Oh no. Ah! I'll play the game, see if you guys can spot the issue. We got a big one. That one's not such a big deal because that's just that part with the chain that holds the thing if the cylinder's broken. We can notch that out a little bit. But over here, we really need to, this, I'm not happy with how this weld looks either, so. Really, we need to cut that off, just weld that hole in the barrel back up, and drill a new hole up here. And put it up here, and then run a 90. That would be the better way to do it, I think. Well, working on our solution to make this cylinder work, step one is hack this thing out of the way weld up that hole and then drill a new hole put our new fitting up top here and then we'll just kind of 90 out the side
tried to use the torch and wash a lot of that weld off there, make for a little less grinding. Things like that I've picked up off IC Weld. I don't know if you guys have ever watched his channel, but man, that guy can freaking weld and fab. He is really good. Plenty to learn from him. All right, ready to get back on the cylinder for old 240. I got us a couple key components, one of them being a half inch weld -alette. I chopped that thing off once, moved it, but now that we cut it off again, it's too short, the one that was on there, which was some sort of metric threads. So I ordered the half inch male NPT elbow by M22 DIN 2353 light, which is what these hydraulic hoses are on this thing, oddly enough. We have this weld -alette here. I brought their old MIG welder home from work also got the argon bottle so we can be back to our TIG welding capability on this machine. So we're back to full strength here at this shop for welding capability. So I think what I'm going to do is TIG weld up the hole that's on this barrel. And then we're going to re-drill it somewhere up in this vector. I want to miss center line, but I think we have to miss the plate that's here. That was obviously our whole problem was the bracket on the stick right now basically comes right along here, so we need to miss that. So we'll get that hole welded up, and then we'll drill another hole somewhere up here, stick this weld -a lead on there, and we'll be good to mount this thing on the machine again. So in order to switch the Dynasty from stick welding mode to TIG welding mode really isn't a big deal. We have our TIG torch, the Argon I just leave hooked up. It plugs back in here instead of the stinger. Make sure our foot pedal is screwed in all the way. And that's pretty much it. Get her fired back up. Looks like I gotta turn the gas on. We're running TIG. And in the process, we just change it from stick to our TIG with the high freak start, is what we normally run. And then what we're gonna be doing, eh, we'll try turning her up, you know, somewhere in there. Over 100 amps, we'll use the foot pedal, but we're using, we're welding steel, so we'll run DC. Aluminum's the only time you ever use AC, which is really not that often. Other than that, I'm not good enough to know what matters too much. We do want to make sure that we're on the correct remote setting. I think it's on remote standard for the foot pedal. I don't know. I just keep hitting buttons until it works. Yeah, I think that'll work. to the drill press. How can we do this? Nothing to it. So those are our little 516 starter hole. I'm going to go up to a half inch drill bit now. Slow her down a little bit more. I think while we're in the drill press, I'm gonna flip back to this hole we need to weld up and hit it with the chamfer bit just to give us a little bit more spot to weld.
So with that nice big chamfer on there with this countersink bit, that'll allow us to get down in there and do a better job welding that hole back out. That's basically our bottom root pass, we'll call it. I think I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit and start filling her in. I'm gonna turn the dial, I'm up in the 130s of amperage now. Trying to make sure I really tie it into the side of the cylinder here. I don't know why we're getting these little bubbles creeping up on us. Huh, I'm getting worse. Should have grind some of that back out of there. So the reason I chose to cap that with 7018 was because that porosity we're getting with the TIG welder. I don't know where that's coming from, but the stick welder will normally fix those kind of issues for you. It just powers through. I'm no welder by any means, just enough to be dangerous. So that's the route I chose to go with. We'll see if it works. I think we're going to be able to hold pressure, no problem. The bottom TIG welds did not seem to have that porosity. That seemed to happen as we went up. So I don't know why. I think we got a good seal in there with our TIG root and we more or less capped it. With the stick, make it look pretty. I think it'll work. Let's weld on our weld let. Gonna deburr the top of that hole. We'll pick this thing all out when we're done. I'm gonna switch back over to TIG for this. At least the root. Hopefully we don't have this porosity issue. Could have been oil from drilling that even.
This is where the all important paint part comes in. So that's all the welding on this. Hopefully, I thought that the last time. Tomorrow we'll get this thing reassembled, put back on the machine. I'm not sure when I'm gonna have the fittings I need. I ordered this guy and an elbow for that other fitting to use with the hoses we already have. So that should make that all work out. It's just a matter of when I get those fittings. I'm not sure when they'll be here. But I'm gonna clean up tonight. Catch you tomorrow. You're right now. We do need to try to clean out this cylinder as best we can from drilling and grinding and welding and all that fun stuff. Loading the cannon. Now to get it out. My retrieval tool is this super custom piece of wood with a screw in it. Car ramrod? Say car ramrod. How's she look? Fitting on the other side of the cylinder, we still had an interference issue right in here. So I've measured out kind of where I think it's gonna land. I'm just gonna notch this chunk of steel out of our way. All this is, is there's a chain you can use if you don't have the cylinder on to hold the thumb up in the stored position. So there's really not a lot of force on this. The cylinder's force is all acting up here. So hacking away at this doesn't bother me. I'll come in and try to radius this edge, kind of fill it that, fill it that, and make them somewhat okay. We'll see what the torch skills look like. But the grinder can come in after that and we'll take out the chewiness. Still need to try to radius that a little bit. All in all, grinder will clean that up. Do this again, Yogo. Peanut butter don't agree with him, see.
Let's do a little wiggling and get the cylinder in place. I think. You know what? It helped tighten the gland first. Looking better than last time. Make sure our lock hole is lined up where it needs to be in the bushing. Look at that, no hammering even required. Those are my kind of tolerances. All right, now we'll just raise it down, try to get that hole lined up on that side. It's awful close right there. Let's see what she does. Oh, come on, girl. Which way do you want to go? Cylinder needs to go out just a buzz. Ah, too much! Too much money! There it is. Boy, that's really on there. Get a bigger hammer. Hit it with your purse. There's just no room to swing is the biggest problem. Oh, we'll get her there. Ah! Right there yet?
Got to make sure this is a lock thread. <sighs> that made up for the top one. This is our moment of truth. Matt was nice enough to pick up some fittings while he was running to the hydraulic store this morning. That fits there. Just have to put it on before we tighten that adapter kit up there. And this guy screws on. This is NPT, NPT. And this converts us to the DIN 2353, hopefully. Is it? Seems like it is. And that guy threads in there. Get that guy tightened up. And then this should thread onto there. Looks like we did all right. Matt, you're a good parts runner. This guy runs, oh man. Better go play the lottery. This side's easy, there's no pipe dope required. We need to dope both of those NPT threads on that guy. Time for the moment of truth, let's give her a test drive. My only concern at this point is this rib here hitting our metal line. Maybe to give that a little ink out of the way. I don't remember exactly how close that got to the barrel. These near the stick is basically your stopping point. Hopefully the cylinder is exactly the same as the old one. I didn't really check it. We're gonna find out. Let's fire it up, take her easily, get her, try to get her bled out and then take her through a cycle and watch how close we get to that line. It's gonna be close. Clearing up here. That's all the way. So next we're gonna need to set the relief valves in the machine. Right now we're holding about 2,500 PSI. The bucket curl wouldn't overcome it, so I need to back off our pressure relief setting. But I'm testing out all the welds. Everything seems to be holding really well. So I'm very happy with all that as far as that goes. My Friday night party animals here. You guys ready for bed? Factory. Real quickly before we call it a night here, I wanted to check out our new AC compressor. Hopefully it looks correct. And it does look correct to me. A little more free as well. Well, if the counterweight was off, it would be easy. But the counterweight's not off. So we need to get this old compressor pulled off and get it out of there. I was trying to change just the clutch only and I kind of wrecked that. But I think it is just a good old fashioned 13 millimeter. Yep. How is that much blood coming? I bumped my hand into a hose clamp. I wasn't even cranking on anything. Getting old and fragile, I guess. In the wintertime dry skin blues. So I, I just accidentally last week purchased this, it's like a quarter inch drive ratchet with a three inch drive end. 
And I got this uh, on Amazon from Tekton. I was trying to buy, which I did buy, this flex head, a shorter flex head 3 8 drive. I didn't have one of those. And I really like this ratchet, but I thought that's weird, but I think this might be the perfect application for it. It's kind of tight and it has very little, basically, drag on the backside. More like the snap-on ratchets I've used, the newer snap-ons. My, my snap-ons are old and have a ton of back drag. Let's see if this helps us any. If not, I grab the good old ratchet wrench here and we'll see if that does anything. One way or another, we're going to get it. Gave these guys a quick wire wheeling, just trying to make life as easy as possible as far as going back in there. I'm going to hit them with a little bit of Never Seize as well to help them screw back in. So this guy is in fact already preloaded with oil. These are our new O-rings here for the lines. We'll put them on and slip them back in. Get this guy bolted back up. Come back. And they just have these hold down bolts. And with a little bit of fighting, we got the belt tensioned up. And that's all the physical installation. Now we just got to grab the gauges and the vacuum pump, suck her down, check for leaks, and charge her up. So our next step here is to hook up our gauges and pull a vacuum on the system. This will A, get the air out so that we can charge into more or less nothing of the vacuum. And secondly, we test for leaks by seeing if we can hold a vacuum versus wasting Freon and seeing it leak out, we see if air leaks in. So we'll get this hooked up. The high and low pressure lines on this machine were right there near the compressor on this hard part before they go to the rubber lines. Then our yellow line here will hook on to the vacuum pump and we'll view the vacuum pressure on each side of the system with these two gauges. Low pressure side is our blue connector and line. And then the high pressure is red. Those are hooked up. Next we're gonna hook up the yellow line to the vacuum pump. Fire that up. And then we come on to, and we come up here to the gauges. And we open that low pressure side up. You can see when I did that, it starts pulling down into the negative side. Now I'm going to open up the high pressure gauge as well. That way we're just pulling on both sides of the system at one time. We don't have to wait before it to equalize. And we'll let this sit here for a little while, 10 minutes or so. Scrap the HVAC. So it's been about 10 minutes now. Everything is pulled down. I'm going to close these valves off. So what, what these valves do is connect the center line to either the high side or the low side. So the hoses are still connected to the gauges when you shut those valves. And you shut the pump off. We're going to let things settle out here from the pump running. But once we're happy with where they're sitting, probably just snap a picture on my phone. And I'm going to let it sit for a couple hours. 
So we've waited a few hours now, also known as the next day. Let's see what our vacuum's looking like. All right, it seems we're holding well on our vacuum. I've grabbed our new Freon. This thing takes two pounds. So I got two full cans, two full 12 ounce cans. And this one's about half full, so that ought to put us right there around that 32 ounce mark. This guy gives you one ounce of Freon and a shot of oil, as well as the stop leak and dye. So if there is anything leaking in the future, you can find it with the dye checker. I think that these are a good idea to put in from the get-go on any refill myself. Hook up our can tap. And what this does is as you screw that down, you can see that guy pokes through and opens up the can. The old ones, the older cans had like a tin thing on top and it was actually like a pokey thing that pierced it. I quickly learned that the newer style cans, a few years back doing this, and I do it every day. The newer style cans don't use that and you need a different can tap to work with it. Pushing it in. So from here on out, I'm gonna leave the high pressure valve closed and we're only ever gonna open the low pressure valve over there. We'll be able to monitor what the system's doing on the high pressure side with the red gauge, but ultimately we're gonna just fill it. We're trying to hit that two pound mark that we found online. Outside of that, we'll see if she cycles and makes cold air. Show what those gauges do here. You see it's in the negative now. The clutch is engaged, the compressor's turning. Let's go see if the cab's nice and cold. Play pumping some nice ice cold air out of the vents. We'll shut the door for the full effect. Oh yeah, this is gonna be nice. Use you back down. I think we're ready to take her outside. Trying to take some weight off the lip of the concrete there. I think I cracked her a little bit going in. Give her a final test here. 
Check out that smooth thumb action. And then I adjusted the relief valve. So now the bucket can overcome it. And I think that'll keep our thumb living. You can see down there where it has a bad angle. You really don't get much clamping force. That's where the progressive thumbs come in and do a better job. All right, so we got her out of the shop. Everything's working right. The thumb's working right. Let's get her posted for sale. So I had this thing posted Saturday afternoon. First thing Monday morning, I get a phone call from guess who? You guessed it, Clint at CNC Equipment. He's asking me about it. I'm telling him everything I know. I mean, it's not a perfect machine, but it's not a bad machine. Well, later that day, we got the money in our bank account and a truck's headed this way. So Wednesday of this week, a truck came in. My uncle was there to help load it, load him out, and it made its way out to Indiana. And hopefully Clint is happy with his new purchase, selling it on to someone he knew out there looking for a machine like this. I'm Sam with Scrappy Industries. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.